In this video, I'll be diving deep into the Open Hand Monk subclass, guiding you from your humble beginnings at level 1 all the way through to mastering the devastating techniques of a 12th level Open Hand Master. Join me as we unravel the mysteries of this powerful subclass and unleash its full potential. Monks acquire the class feature known as Flurry of Blows at level 1. This allows them to punch twice, each dealing 4 to 7 damage. Since this is a bonus action, monks can already attack twice, even at level 1. I'm going to show this in actual combat shortly, but let me go over the class features first. Key represents the monk's inner energy. They can expend this to perform various special actions, such as Flurry of Blows. Unarmored Defense adds the monk's Wisdom modifier to their armor class. This is especially useful to those players who wants to run around naked. Dexterous Attacks add the monk's Dexterity modifier to their attack and damage rolls if it is higher than their Strength modifier, as it should. Deft Strikes will set the monk's weapon and unarmed attack damage to a minimum of 1d4 and the damage type to bludgeoning. And lastly, Bonus Unarmed Strike allows the monk to perform an unarmed bonus attack after attacking with a monk weapon or performing an unarmed attack. This proves particularly handy when your key reserves are depleted. At level 1, the monk has two key points and his armor class benefits from his Wisdom modifier because of unarmored defense. The next class features are only applicable if you're using monk weapons or unarmed attacks. Monks are proficient with simple weapons. The weapons on this list are considered monk weapons. You've made a grave mistake. After performing an attack, the monk can follow through with either flurry of blows or unarmed strike. Remember, flurry of blows require key points to perform, but unarmed attack doesn't. Thus, it's best utilized when your key is depleted. We can see here the monk's dexterity modifier being applied to the attack and damage rolls as per the dexterous attack class feature description. At level 2, the monk gains another key point, and their movement speed is increased by 3 meters if they're not wearing armor or using a shield. They also gain 3 new class actions. Patient defense, while active, causes attack rolls against the monk to have disadvantage, and their dexterity saving throws will have advantage. Running past this Hellbore will provoke an opportunity attack. Don't waste a step. But since the monk activated patient defense, the enemy's attack was made with a disadvantage, and it missed. Step of the Wind Dash doubles the monk's movement speed and allows him to jump without expending a bonus action. Step of the Wind Disengage will not provoke an opportunity attack as you run past enemies, and similarly, you can jump without expending a bonus action. Here, we used a bonus action to activate Step of the Wind Dash. Keep in mind that the regular dash requires an action point to activate. And even though he no longer has a bonus action, the monk was still able to jump. On my way. At level 3, the monk can select a subclass. 
I'll be featuring the way of the open hand in this video. This is the only level that a monk doesn't gain a key point. The class action flurry of blows will be enhanced at this level. It can now inflict different conditions in addition to the 8 to 18 points of damage it inflicts. Topple is a bonus action that can knock enemies prone for one turn. Shouldn't have made me your enemy. Stagger prevents an enemy from making reactions for one turn. Running past an enemy allows them to use their reaction to perform an opportunity attack. You can prevent this by hitting them with flurry of blows to stagger them first. These boots have seen everything. And flurry of blows push will push enemies five meters away from the monk. Try me. The monk gains an additional key point at level 4. And he can now use his reaction to gain resistance to falling damage via the class feature called Slow Fall. We can see here that the falling damage was reduced by half due to Slow Fall. Watch your back. As comparison, here's a Starion making a similar jump, but taking 100% of the damage. I'll select Ability Improvement for the feat and increase my Monk's Dexterity. This will increase the Monk's Armor class, Attack and Damage rolls, and Initiative. At level 5, monks gain another key point, for a total of 6. They also gain an extra attack. This allows them to attack 3 times per turn. The monk can also now perform stunning strike using a weapon or an unarmed attack. This will stun the target, preventing him from taking an action, bonus action, or reaction during his turn. While fighting Priestess Gut, you need to kill her quickly or she'll call for help. Every goblin within earshot will then turn hostile. I'm coming for you. But if you hit her with stunning strike first, she will effectively skip her turn. While the stun wears off after her next turn, you can always try to stun her again. in that corpse. You should take a look. At level 6, the monk gains another key point for a total of 7. 
The class feature called Improved Unarmored Movement increases their movement speed by 4.5 meters when not wearing any armor or using a shield. At this level, my monk can move 14 meters per turn. Keep a blade close. Astarian can only move 9 meters, will be done. while Lazel 12 meters. Key Empowered Strikes changes the damage type of a monk's unarmed strikes from non-magical to magical. This enhances the effectiveness of their unarmed strikes against creatures resistant or immune to non-magical attacks and damage. The passive abilities known as Manifestation of Body, Mind, and Soul grant the monk's unarmed attacks an extra 1d4 necrotic, psychic, or radiant damage, respectively. Additionally, the monk's wisdom modifier is added to the damage roll. This is a passive feature that you need to manually activate. Let's choose necrotic damage for now. Note that this will only trigger when using unarmed strikes. Having high wisdom will increase the bonus damage even higher. Wholeness of body replenishes half of the monk's key points and heals him 18 hit points. For the next three turns, the monk also gains an extra bonus action, allowing him to attack four times per turn. Right now, our key is depleted and we only have one bonus action point. Wholeness of Body restored three points of key and granted the monk an extra bonus action for three turns. This will allow him to attack four times in one turn. This is the regular attack. The extra attack. And two attacks using the bonus action. The monk gains another key point at level 7, and unlocks his powerful evasion class feature. There are numerous effects that will require a dexterity saving throw, such as area of effect spells, traps, and dragon's breath attacks. On a successful save, the monk takes no damage at all, while characters without this feature would typically still take half damage even if they succeed their saving throw. If the monk fails the dexterity saving throw, he would only take half damage instead of the full damage listed in the spell's description. The monk here barely took any damage, while Shadowheart and Lazel are already incapacitated. Astarian did a good job in avoiding the traps too. Stillness of mind will automatically remove the charmed or frightened condition. This will come in handy when you are fighting near but do note that you automatically waste an action point every time this is triggered, and there's no way to turn it off. We can see here that the frightened condition is now gone. But we also no longer have an action point during our turn. I think it would have been much better if we have an option to toggle this one on and off. At level 8, the monk can select another feat. I'm picking Tavern Brawler. This feat allows the monk to add his strength modifier twice to the damage and attack rolls of his unarmed attacks. Keep in mind that strength modifier is only applied twice if your character's strength is higher. If dexterity is higher, then the bonus is strength modifier plus dexterity modifier, as can be seen here. Strength enhancing elixirs are easily obtainable in the game, 
be sure to drink one to get the full benefit of this feat. At level 9, the monk gains advanced unarmored movement. With this, difficult terrain no longer slows him down, and his jump distance is increased by 6 meters while not wearing armor or using a shield. Avard's black tentacles will create a difficult terrain. However, the monk will be able to move freely over this surface. Breathe deep and move. Other characters, such as Lazel, will have their movement halved. The class action called Key Resonation Punch deals 5 to 12 bludgeoning damage. This technique causes the key within the opponent's body to resonate with the monk. This can be performed by using a regular or a bonus action. The monk can then detonate the key using Key Resonation Blast. This deals 3d6 force damage and has a blast area of 5 meters. Creatures that are resonating with the monk who are hit with this blast will also explode. Key Resonation Punch was used in conjunction with Wholeness of Body here. This allowed the monk to resonate with four enemies and then detonate the key all in the same turn. This one died before we can even get to the grand finale. And now the key resonation blast. That's five attacks in one turn. At level 10, the monk's movement speed is further increased by six meters. Purity of body makes the monk immune to poison and diseases. At level 11, monks gain the Tranquility subclass feature. This grants them sanctuary after taking a long rest. Sanctuary shields the monk from enemy attacks and prevents them from targeting him with spells. Although area of effect spells will still harm the monk. In this fight, even though the monk is right in front of the clown dribbles and bitey buddy, they can't attack him. And so they went after other targets instead. Sanctuary will end once the monk attacks another creature. This allows you to set the battlefield to your advantage and fight on your own terms. At level 12, monks gain another feat. I'm selecting Ability Improvement once again to maximize the Ability Score modifier from Strength and Dexterity. With these numbers, the ability modifier from strength is 2, so having a supply of strength elixirs is very useful. And the ability modifier from dexterity is 5. 
This increases the damage from Tavern Brawler and boosts the monk's armor class, attack and damage rolls, and initiative even further. And there you have it. The Open Hand Monk, a relentless warrior that offers dynamic combat, tactical control, and ever-expanding abilities. Thanks for watching.